Welcome to a run-through of a vintage Disc Golf Valley Daily. This one dates all the way back to 419 of 2019. And let's set the Wayback Machine to version number 693. This is a pre-Latitude 64 version. So let's take a look at a non-Latitude 64 bag. Our bag starts with the putter of choice back then, which is a sticky, accurate crab. When the Latitude 64 conversion happened, the crab became the dagger. And those that actually were involved and had the game before the conversion actually got to keep one sticky, accurate crab as a legacy disc. So kind of a nice little token treat from Pear. And we kind of treasure that. The mud skip, which you see in there, is an accurate sticky, and that became the fuse. The marlin, which is also sticky and accurate, became the explorer. And you'll see that there are three manta in there, all of them 10-speed. Those were the fastest discs you could possibly get before the Latitude 64 conversion. So you kind of needed to load up on them, and so the gambit of them are the accurate sticky the big skip extra glide and the light extra glide and those round out all six discs because you could only carry six discs back then the manta eventually became the musket so keep that in mind as you watch the daily tournament and also you'll notice that there's considerable difference with the way the discs fly so let's see what a vintage open tournament looks like. We start out with a sunshine hole and breaking out the sticky, accurate marlin. And like any first hole of basically any open, you know that it's a must ace. And so I'm sure I restarted this many, many times in order to get it. Now we're moving on to the sunshine par four. So in this case, I got to use my skip glide manta because that is the fastest, most distant driver I've got. I managed to clear the hill, which is great. And then check out this skip. It's like a stone going across water. Those kind of skips are long gone now. But, you know, 51 foot with the sticky crab. Good thing it's sticky. Aim low. And hey, there aren't even any logos on the basket. Yep, that's how old this vintage version is. These days, this is a simple ace for pretty much everybody. But back in the old days, we were just throwing a sticky marlin. And you can see the stickiness effect gripped pretty strong. 43 foot putt. And going to show off the range of the sticky accurate crab throwing it right in there with no problems so we move on to three holes from crows hole number four sure now it's known as over the top but back then this was a super secret route and taking the light glide manta the furthest flying disc in the air that you can possibly get in the game and launching it over the top and check it out it rolls over lands close to the basket Previously, this would be amazing, but now it's just kind of common and routine. So here we go with another. This is always a routine eagle for everybody, but back in the day, this was pretty tough. So the light glide and throw it out nice and wide, and there's no way that's coming back, right? But oh yes, super light, super glide, and the wind just shoves it over there. So 22 footer with the sticky crab, putting it in and yet another eagle. So things are looking really good thus far, but it would look really routine if this was nowadays. So big square, big square was always a challenge no matter uh, what version you're in. In this case, trying out a forehand with that three crosswind. And it's just a accurate sticky manta and trying to get basically like any other shot on this hole, get as close as we possibly can. It checks up, and so now I've got a 77-footer with a three-tailwind. That's uh, that's scary back then, but managed to hit low, and it's sticky, so it stayed in. And we'll finish up with some blueberry holes, which uh, nowadays people are just using, you know, a nice explorer. But back then, you know, you had to throw the manta. Even then, it's barely getting pin high. So the flights have definitely changed.
And this, actually kind of worried that it was going to spit out or be projectile vomited, because that's what the chains used to do at times. With the uphill on this hole, just grabbing that old light glide again and trying to get as close to the basket. This was uh, generally a pain because of that slope, but managed to kind of cut into the hill a little bit. Not too bad. Just a 29-footer. Even then, you had to elevate because that crab's going to start breaking to the left. This time, it breaks right into the basket and stays. So, just one hole to go. Is this an ace run hole? <laughs> sure it is now, but not back then. Back then, you just wanted to get close and hope for the best. So, a little mud skip, which lands nice and clean. 19-footer, easy peasy. Throwing it in, getting the birdie, and finishing off the round with 17. Not all that exciting nowadays, but back then, check out the distance on the competition. One stroke ahead of the incredible, infamous Derek, but check it out. Four strokes ahead of those that are tied for third place. And that 17 is minus what under? Hey, who knows? It was never displayed. And that's the way things were back then. And we liked it! No. Things have improved considerably since those old versions. And what are those numbers next to everybody's names, you might be wondering? That's actually each person's rating. Ratings used to be accumulative, so if you won some multiplayer games, your rating had the potential of going up a few numbers. So those that played a lot wound up getting a pretty high rating. And yeah, I don't think you'll ever see anything quite that high again, even with the potential for hole skipping or any other of those kinds of shenanigans. So that kind of covers the vintage open tournament viewing. And I hope you've enjoyed it, and I hope you realize that we have come a long way. Until next time, this is David Salee, and I will see you in the valley.